we're finding that today, that when you have situations where you you need to get a take to match or to be the same thing over and over again, and it's good to have more than one camera you know, preserving the scene, because then you have other angles. I mean, rather than doing it again and again and again, if you have enough cameras, you've got it. It's done. And, and you know, it used to be that the rule of thumb was, well, you only really can shoot for one camera at a time, which is how it was done for many, many years. Andre, being a cameraman, understands where to put the camera and how to get the eye lines to work and the sight lines to work and get the lighting right. I mean, it helps that he comes from being a cameraman. So he knows how to use multiple cameras. It, it's, everybody doesn't know how to do that. I have over a 20-year relationship with Andre, so when I had this opportunity to work with him, I was very excited because I had a director that knew the camera. He explained to me early on that he likes to use a lot of cameras and that even on simple dialogue scenes, he'll run three, four, five cameras, at which point I said, well, we got to find a good cameraman. In this film, every scene's been a challenge. In trying to figure out the whole puzzle, the whole chess game of how to go about doing all this from a from a camera standpoint you've got to take the whole environment into account that it's not just a shot here a shot there but it's got to be a number of shots that may happen simultaneously and usually do i think for the drama or big uh, action sequences is much better way we have more cameras can cover different angles <laughs> You look at five cameras and you're doing a, a punch or a kick and you know you can only make that punch or kick work for a few angles at, at one time and if you're covering all the angles at once i literally go up to andre and say andre which angle do you want to work this time because I, I can't make them all work and he's totally aware of that he's like no i want this one to this is for the kick this is for before the kick and, you know he, he's very clear in, in what he wants and so it's worked out pretty well the Su versus Ling fight was shot over a period of maybe five days. We didn't shoot all at once. It was a very difficult scene to shoot. There's a lot of factors that made it difficult, like the fire. There was a ring of fire that makes it very dangerous, not only for the actors, but also for the crew. We've got rain pouring down through the whole week, so the actors are soaked. The crew is soaked for the whole week. They're just wet. So in a situation like this, it's most beneficial to shoot with multi-cameras because you want to limit the amount of times you have. the actors have to do this over and over and over. Many of the stunts are very strenuous, many of the stunts are very difficult, and many of the stunts are dangerous. So we break the scene down into pieces. We take each section of the fight, we break it down, and we shoot that section from multiple cameras to get the best angles. The best situation for an editor is to get a lot of angles that are all great. You know, that's one of the reasons I love working with Andre, because he gives us a lot of material that we can work with. In terms of his multiple camera use, I mean, I really do feel as though in terms of a movie-going experience for the audience, I think it, it does enhance that because we are able to view the scene from so many different angles. This is the part of the fight where Ling throws Sue against the helicopter. This is one of the areas where we had to use multiple cameras because we didn't want to throw Jen against the chopper too many times. So in this case, we, we used four or five cameras. And you just have to pick the best pieces to illustrate the most dramatic part of the fight. And then we take all these pieces of the fight, we string them together, and you get the whole fight scene. 